the female lead tells women's stories. Remarkable, diverse, inspiring. An educational charity promoting positive female role models who show the many different routes to success and fulfillment. So often I hear people saying, oh, how do I get started? How do I do this? How do you do it? You just start. You have to begin. And it won't be perfect and it'll be messy and it'll be hard, but you're doing something and you're on your way. Empowering future generations of women through films and a book of 60 women donated to 18,000 schools in the UK and USA, reaching millions of young people. And through our female lead societies, we help girls to discover new role models that speak to their passions, ambitions and careers. Through our research into social media and mental health, we found a solution to the negative impact of social media on teen girls. Through a simple intervention, which encouraged girls to follow different influences, we were able to change their entire social media experience and sense of well-being. We called this campaign, Disrupt Your Feed, and it reached 20 million people on social, with 330 million impressions all over the globe. So what's next? As well as inspiring girls, we're now finding ways to measurably improve the lives of older women through data, research and the stories of those who have overcome challenges and found their own personal versions of success. We're a long way from being finished. Join us in our mission. Are we going to talk about women's rights again? Yes, we're going to talk about it until there's balance. Hello everyone, welcome to our Female Lead LinkedIn Live. Um, I'm Edwina Dunn, I'm the founder of the Female Lead. I have a very special guest for us today and we have a very exciting session ahead. We're going to be talking about how do we become better leaders. Now, in this session, we're not only going to hear from an amazing speaker and educator, um, but we're also going to be introducing some new concepts and some new ideas for you. So um, it's rather a momentous one. So without any further ado, let me please introduce Nada. Nada, welcome. Thank Nada. you so much. <laughs> Nada, sorry, I talk right across you there. Rookie mistake, forgive me. Let me just say, Nada is a very, very expert TEDx speaker. She's a number one best-selling author, Rise, um, Rise Up For You. And she's also one of the 40 under 40 uh, leaders celebrated, a certified leadership and confidence coach, and the founder of the organization Rise Up For You, which is an amazing array of work and a body of talent that I think is really, really special. The thing I like about you is one of your headlines, Nada, is the world's waiting for you, so why are you waiting on the world? And I think that's a brilliant way to start this session. So let me just say first, that um, we're going to be looking at a few things. We're going to be looking at the habits of great leaders and Nada is going to take us through the top five. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to really try and encourage everybody to invest in themselves. And now is a really good time to do that. We've been kind of run dry through lockdown. And so we want to reinvest and re-excite. We're going to introduce you to a new tool from the female lead that looks at emotional skills, EQ. We're going to look at self-service content by females for females. 
and we're going to look at a tailored new leadership program called Rise, which is like having a personal trainer for your for your mental development. Very, very exciting. And at the end of this, we're going to introduce to you a survey, some free content, and we're even going to have time for a few questions at the end. So that is our agenda. And now, uh, enough from me, I'd like to turn to our fabulous guest, Nada. And I think, Nada, you are going to help us get to grips with the subject of leadership. Why do we need it? Why is it more than more important than ever before? Yeah. So hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Edwina. It's always an honor to be here calling in from Orange County, California, early morning. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, this is such an important topic. It's one of my favorite topics. And I think the first question is, is what, what is leadership? Is leadership a title? Is it a role? Is it a mindset? And I always like to go with the latter half. And having a leadership mindset is so important today. I mean, there are so many different challenges and things that we're seeing, not only in the workplace, right, but personally and just around the world. We need more leaders every day, all day long. I mean, right now, in my opinion, we're in a scarcity of, of great leaders. Now, that doesn't mean that they're not out there, but there's certain qualities that we need to bring out in ourselves so that we can establish ourselves as a leader and really make the impact that we're meant to make. And I mean, we can be a leader in our household. We can be a leader in our community. We can be a leader in the workforce, but definitely an abundance of leadership is something that's very needed today. And, and as you mentioned earlier, earlier, the time is now, your time is now. So what can we do to really step into that leadership mindset and be viewed and seen as a leader and make the impact that we need to make? Yeah, and it's not easy stepping forward, is it? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not easy to see ourselves as leaders, especially when we're still learning and we're still growing. And so I think sometimes we always look to someone else to lead. But obviously, when we talk about the female lead, we're really suggesting that people take charge of their own life and their own career. So in a sense, we all need to learn those skills, don't we? Yeah, and that and you're absolutely right. That's where the personal leadership comes in. And sometimes many individuals and, you know, we're working with corporations every day and leaders around the world. We're in 15 countries and we often see leaders. They want to lead other people, but they forget about themselves first. And it always starts with personal leadership. And I know we're going to talk about, you know, the different qualities that leaders have, but it comes back to the to the self first so that you can be your best to then help and support other people. And that's what we talk about, that leadership mindset. You know, most individuals, I won't say all, because sometimes people get into leadership roles because of a skill that they're really good at. Maybe they're really strong in, in uh, sales or technology. But most individuals that are considered a phenomenal or great leader it's because there's personal leadership that they've worked on and continue to work on to then step into what I call transformative leadership. So you've talked to me about some particular elements to leadership that, that we can kind of begin to understand. I know we're not going to have time in this session yeah. to go into the kind of depth and, and expertise that you share normally um, in, in longer, much longer and deeper sessions. But can you perhaps just give us a, a little nudge on what each of those main ones are? Yeah, I, I would love to. Take your notepad out, everybody. <laughs> Start writing these down because this is the meat and potatoes of, of really defining and, and building the leader within and being able to create that transformation without. So the first one is another topic. I mean, to tell you the truth, I could talk about all five of these points for hours but it's confidence, okay? It really is confidence. I mean, we have found in our research, just in the last six months, we've assessed over a thousand working professionals that have PhDs, master's degrees, and the number one challenge that they're struggling with is confidence. And the reality is, is that we cannot be the leader that we need to be. We can't pull the potential out of other people if we can't pull the potential out of ourselves. And it comes back to that self-confidence and being able to take risk, 
believing that you're enough, going after the job promotion, pushing through your self-doubt. Notice how I said pushing and not eliminating because self-doubt will always exist for everyone, but it's about managing it and still being able to move forward. What we're seeing today, unfortunately, and again, 82% is a huge number of professionals that their number one challenge is confidence. We're seeing that a lack of confidence is hindering the ability to take action. And we know that great leaders, they take action, not only for themselves, for their community and for the people that they're serving. So confidence is number one, by far, the first step that we really need to start with. Yeah, and, and we have to believe in our power to make a difference, to make a contribution, and to know, I guess, the, the qualities that we have that we can bring out in order to achieve that. Yeah, know the qualities and be okay with the qualities that we don't have, right? Because we all have strengths and some of us have opportunities for growth, but being confident is being able to say, here are the areas that I can grow in, and I believe I can grow in these areas, right? Not looking at the areas of growth and saying, well, I'm a lack. I have a lack of, right? These skills aren't in me. No, you can always learn. It's that growth mindset. Okay, so confidence is the biggie yeah. and the hard one. And we're not going to crack that overnight. No. But I think, <laughs> and I don't think it's it's something that actually is a constant. I think depending on your mood, depending on the kind of day or the week you've had, that can kind of ebb and flow. I, I see that in myself. You know, I don't always wake up feeling like I'm going to conquer the world today. Um you know, we have moments where we go, I just really want a quiet day and to keep my head down. Yeah. So what else do we need to do? What else do we need to think about and practice? Yeah, after confidence, I would, and, and really they go hand in hand is emotional intelligence. And I know that, you know, I had the honor of being on here, I think almost half a year ago now, that's how long ago it was, you know, and we did a session on emotional intelligence, but, you know, confidence falls under emotional intelligence, but building that self-awareness, the ability to manage your emotions, having social awareness, empathy, you know, service, leadership, and then being able to make the impact coach lead solve problems i mean that is that is the bulk of eq one of the things that we're seeing with eq today though is that it's very very misunderstood and so i i see a lot of people walk around and say i have a strong eq i'm very emotionally intelligent but when i look at their assessments for example of their team it says the complete opposite so we have a very distorted, you know, distorted view of what EQ really is. And to tell you the truth, I mean, it is a beast. It's 18 competencies that we need to actively work on. And we need to look at these pillars and say, where do I need the most support? Do I need it in self-awareness? Do I need it in empathy? For me, I'll tell you, you know, the one area in emotional intelligence that I really had to work on in order to be a better leader was that pillar three, which was social awareness, right? It was being more empathetic, showing empathy, understanding what empathy looks like, understanding what my nonverbal cues look like. If I'm sitting in a meeting and my face is shut down, what are people thinking? Of, <laughs> do they think I'm upset? Do they think I'm mad? So really, that was a pillar that I had to work really hard on. And it was also the pillar that some of my team members, you know, when Oh, we've lost you, um, Nada. I hope you'll come back. I'm not sure if we if we um, lost the internet connection there for a little bit, but I'll keep talking and then let me know what happens there. You know, when I was an executive at 27 years old, there was a lot of feedback that I got. Hmm. I hope that can be done. And anybody that says to me, you know, I have a high EQ. I always question that because we always can be. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree because actually a high, you know, when you think you have high EQ, I always think it's partially that you are very aware of how you're feeling and what you're communicating, but it's not always what other people are doing. So I think that's where it can get really confusing. 
Okay, I'm now the resident expert on emotional intelligence because we've lost the fabulous Nada, but hopefully we will get her back. Um, one of the things that I am going to talk about is how we can understand our emotional intelligence better. So one of the things that I'm going to introduce to you is a tool for exactly that, because I do think it's one of the hardest things we have to get to grips with. And we've been working um, with a neuroscientist on um, a survey, a very, very simple survey, which everybody can do, that we are putting on our website. Um, and that survey, starts to give you clues about your emotional engagement, your emotional strength, how you feel right in that moment. And then we can create from that um, a persona, so a certain typology. And that persona is something that you can share with other people, which um, can really give a line of communication and connectivity, which I think is really um, formidable. We'll come on to that. But we have Nada back. Fantastic. I lost you. I don't know what happened. I just got shut down. <laughs> it was that emotional strength coming out. It obviously caused a, a, a wave effect. <laughs> the universe saying, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh no! Well, yeah. What part? I was talking about EQ, and uh, tell me where where I left off at. Yeah, I mean, I think we should try and just touch on a couple of the other leadership qualities yeah. because we need to move into the second aspect of our conversation. So Absolutely. perhaps. Absolutely. So the first two pillars. Of, of leadership really have to do with personal leadership. So again, that's the confidence and the emotional intelligence. Now, once we've built that, we can move on to really creating transformation and being the leader that we're meant to be. It's not the opposite. It doesn't go backwards. So the next thing that's really important, and Jim Rohn says this, and most of you are familiar, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And that's having a community, a tribe, a circle of people that you can seek feedback from, that you can get support from, that push you to be better. So I really encourage everyone right now, who are the five people that you spend the most time with or socialize with the most? And if you don't have five people, we got to find them. And if your five people maybe aren't putting the best energy out there for you, we need to find a new tribe because we are highly affected by other human beings and we know that. And we don't want them to take us back and pull down our confidence and our ability. We want them to help us support forward and also keep us accountable. So that's definitely the next one is finding your circle, finding your tribe. And I'll go just straight into the fourth one. And that's now sparking transformation. And this is a really big one. You know, great leaders pass it on. They pay it forward. Great leadership doesn't just start with you. I always say that a great leader is somebody that if I'm working in a corporation and I left the corporation, it would still run perfectly fine without that leader. And if it can't, then that means that the leader hasn't done the job they needed to do to create transformation, to put infrastructures in place, and to really build an ecosystem of more phenomenal leadership. And that's really important is coaching, mentoring, passing it down, paying it forward so that other people can learn how to become leaders as well. So that's definitely the, the, the fourth step. I love that one. And of course, at the female lead, we talk about rising by lifting others. So it really echoes strongly for me, that one. And and, and I, I don't think we pay it as much attention as perhaps that we should. But let's go straight to your fifth one, please. Yeah. And then the fifth one is one through four, confidence, emotional intelligence, building your tribe, sparking transformation are so important. But if you don't have a brand and people don't see you and you're not out there, then you're never going to step into that leadership position now, right? That ecosystem of leadership, if you're not seen, if you're not heard, and if you're not recognized. So building your brand is really, really critical. I mean, we have a lot of people that come to us and say, I want to be a leader in my corporate environment. I want to be an influencer. I want to be this, but they're not seen. 
They don't have a brand. They haven't established themselves as an expert in their industry. And the reality is, is that you have to be seen, you have to be heard, and you have to be relevant in order for people, the optics of it, to see you and say, that person is a leader. That person has something to say and I should listen. So it's really important that we start building our brand. And I think that COVID-19 has really like accelerated that. I know there's been a lot of people that have said, what do I do now? Because I'm virtual. So your brand is, is all pretty much online, right? And so building your brand is not only important online, but also in person when we go back into the office, really establishing what your values are and how you should show up. And it's really hard, isn't it? Because I think we have a natural aversion to showing off, you know, really overselling who we are. And, you know, maybe we mix up that idea with, I'm great, you know, notice me. Mm -hmm. But it's not so much about that as simply perhaps sharing in each meeting on each occasion what our opinions are, what our contribution is, because it's yes. really easy just to kind of slightly switch off when you're sitting in front of a screen all day. Yeah, and it's really just about adding value. You know, I, I built a pretty strong brand personally, and a lot of people say, well, how did you build your brand? I'm like, well, if you look at the majority of my content, I'm just educating. I'm just adding value. I'm putting little golden nuggets out there for people to take. And so it doesn't actually become about me, right? I mean, it's about me and it's not about me. When you when you think about other people first and you serve and you add value, then everything comes back to you. So it's like that full circle effect. Well, I know you can talk about this subject in <laughs> great depth. And I also know your book is fantastic. So, you. you know, you can find that on our website and we'll share it after this session um, because I know you've only just really touched the very edge. But let's turn to the idea that we I filled in when we lost you momentarily about emotional intelligence and how we can really start to get a stronger grip on that. I want to talk about something that, you know, we've created um, as the female lead, which we're calling Fulfillment Finder. And I know it sounds a bit like a dating app, but it isn't. It is about understanding and finding our emotional intelligence. So this is brand new, guys, and we're really super excited about it. As I say, it is uh, a survey. Uh, you fill it in, and it gives you some clues as to who you are and how you relate to the world around you, your five pillars in your life. So um, we might be, this is what it looks like on the website. So you should find it as soon as you go there. And there's a little bit of an explanation. There's a, a video where I talk rather slowly. I'm sorry about that. But there's a video that explains how you use it. And then you fill it in. And effectively, it's giving you clues on self-awareness. Um, it's giving you a whole range of curated content, which matches to your persona and um, it's that persona that re that reveals the kind of things that you find you know really exciting really positive and you're really strong in and those things where you're feeling you know perhaps a little less a little more lacking and so it's very much a personal measure for you to get to know and there you can see the button which is take the survey We've had 2,000 people completed already, which is very, very exciting. And those collective voices we're going to use very much to communicate the changes that women need in work to come. So as we return from COVID, you know, this idea of can we build better workplaces, I think is, is, is really exciting. So, so Nadia, you've done the survey, haven't you? I have, and I love it, by the way. Every single person needs to take this survey. And, you know, it's, it's shocking because sometimes I take a survey and I'm like, yeah, that's not true. <laughs> but this was spot on, Edwina. So, you know, bravo to you and your team. I got my results. I was the executive achiever. I read through everything and I thought, well, that's not me. But yes, it is. <laughs> it was definitely me. 
really, you know, the thing that I love about it is, and again, the fulfillment finder, you're not separating the professional from the person. You're saying, no, we're all of it, you know, and they always impact one another. The person is the professional. The professional is the person. And fulfillment is 360. It's not just in one area. And so I really loved just seeing my results in society and money and career and self-worth and relationships and, and understanding my persona a little bit better, the strengths that I have and some opportunities for growth that are absolutely true that I, that I need to be very conscious of. So. Uh, and we we had a lovely conversation with one of the big organizations who um, took the survey and, and we're working with um, to explore what this can help them do and what it can help them shape. And it was really exciting. We were speaking to some of the leaders and I know because you were fantastic when you spoke about executive achiever. And I know you said sometimes these guys are the hardest on themselves because they give, 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 but they don't always put back into themselves the kind of care and attention that they need. Absolutely. You, you, this persona thrives on making a positive impact, right? They're the achiever. They want to put their best foot forward. They wake up and there's nothing that they can't do in their mind. But again, there's just that that level of consciousness of, okay, just taking care of the self outside of achievement, outside of work, outside of making an impact on other people. How do I just slow down myself and make sure that I'm good too? That's a really an important critical point there. Well, um, I would love to talk more about them. By the way, I did it and I'm a reformer joy seeker, <laughs> which is not a surprise because I am happiest when I'm petitioning for the female lead. So um, it, it, was a, it was really a joy for me to see how much I get from the female lead and how important it is to me. Let's have a look. I think you're gonna show some of the personas. Here we go, thank you, Becky. So there are 12. So you can be everything from a peacemaker to an influencer, there I am, the reformer, a mediator, a knowledge seeker, investigator, a crisis manager, creator, bon vivant, lovely, a bit of French in there, an achiever, everyone's friend and an entertainer. So, you know, they're really interesting and they're three dimensional and there's real data and real science behind them. So this is what we're so excited about. And then what happens from there? So you get these personas, what happens then? Well, you can do one of two things. One, you can use the persona and then go to the website and under each of the sections in the website, there is free content on anything you wanna look at from work to society, to self, to relationships, videos, films, books, a whole load of free content there, which we've tagged to each of these areas. But that's not all. Really, really exciting. We have worked with Nada and her fantastic team at Rise Up For You to create a brand new leadership course, which is written by women, led by women, and it's for women. So Nada, tell us a little bit about this fabulous leadership course that you've created. Yeah, I'm I'm really thrilled about this. And the re well, first off, I think it's perfect timing for everything that's just happening in the world. I know there's a new article that just came out that's been coming out about how women have really been impacted by COVID in the workforce and just some of these challenges that we're having. So, you know, it's going to be awesome. The content is invaluable. We're going to be touching on the most important and critical points to really stepping in the workforce, negotiating, self-awareness how to build your personal brand, how to speak up, break imposter syndrome. So the content is invaluable, but the coolest thing is that it's live. And a lot of courses today are very passive. And research shows that in order to make the transformation you need to make, there's got to be engagement that's happening, and that is critical. So live all over the world, you and your fabulous com um, colleagues 
I mean, I can feel the excitement already. And I'm really super glad that you've done this. And you have been so gener generous in donating some of the enrollment fees to the female lead, which helps us do more, give more, create more free content and reach out to more schools, more universities. So thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, that, and that's important. It's, it's supporting one another and the research to move forward and be our best. And we keep the research coming and we are keeping the collective voices um, and the conversations with the corporates coming so that we can give um, really good advice from your voices and your data. So um, I think, let me just show finally um, that we have, um, this, is, this is what you can do. So you can run the survey, you can share your persona with anybody you like, your friends, your mom, your colleagues, and it's quite fun to talk about it. You can spend as long as you like on free content and search that. And then, as I said, you can check out the coaching um, and invest in yourself um, and develop your skills and learn from Nada and her fabulous colleagues. So there are all your options. Um, I think we have time for some questions. We've raced through it. We've done the impossible. Um, but now we have an opportunity to answer some questions. So here we go. Here's the first one. Will the program help me understand and develop EQ? <laughs> that's a great one. Yes, it will. And because again, that's where that's where it all starts. Personal leadership, it starts there. And honestly, we need to know the most important thing about, you know, becoming a leader and building these skills is understanding where, again, those opportunities for growth are. There's some areas that, you know, are really strong for you. And there's some areas that you have. We have what we call blind spots. We all have them. And so this program will help you understand some of those blind spots and then give you the tools. That's the important part. It's not just talking at you. It's take out the notepad, do this exercise, here's the workshop, and really breaking down to create that transformation. And that's the critical part of actually moving these skills is getting the tools and the strategies that you can actively implement in the moment. It sounds fantastic. And I know the energy you communicate these ideas is constant. Like this is not you in a good morning or on a good day. <laughs> this is you. I know that. <laughs> Can everyone become a leader or do some people have it and others don't? This I hear so often, this question. Are we born with it or do we learn it and grow it? Yeah, I love this question. And I, you know, I always go back to my book, right? Rise up for you, closing the gap between you and your potential. I would have never wrote that book if my answer was no, not everyone can be a leader. Everyone has the potential within them to lead and to be their best and to make a positive impact. But it takes ourselves, it takes our wantingness to grow and be better. And it also takes the community around us to really step into that leadership. I'm one of those people that don't believe that people don't have it. I think with the right community, with the right tools, with the right curriculum, with the right mindset, you can do and be whatever you want, including leading and stepping into that role. Do you think leaders have more fun than followers, Nada? More fun than followers? <laughs> Interesting question. Huh. I think it depends on the leader. I think it depends what the leader thrives off of. So for me, I have fun leading. That, that, like, but that's the achiever, executive persona, right? If you read my persona, <laughs> that's what it says. That's what makes me thrive. Like I go to bed thinking about people at night and if they're, if they feel good, if they feel like they got coached, if they feel like they're moving that like other people's success is on my mind. And so, but that's also fun for me. You know, like you ask my fiance, he's like, you always talk about work. I'm like, no, it's not work. It's humanity. It's people, it's leading. And it's just, it's so important. So I would say both for me. That's nice. I jumped in and someone asked a question. Is failure an important part of becoming a leader? 
And how do we pick ourselves up after failure? It's very uh, powerful. Great question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, failure is, I mean, there's always the dichotomy, right? Failure, success, hot, cold. In order to appreciate success and understand the taste, you got to know what it feels like not to have success, which is the failure. But here's that second part of the question. How do we pick ourselves up after failure? It's recognizing that failure is a part of the process and not feeling ashamed by the failure, not feeling discouraged by the failure. So failure is a part of the process. It's a part of the journey. And so I really think that as a society, we need to reframe the emotions around failure because it's very icky for a lot of people. And we're seeing this in our youth today. They're afraid to take any kind of action because of failing. And it's like, no, lean into the failing. If you fail, that's okay. Learn from it. Now let's try it again and see if we can get to the next step. So it, it's really important. But this is also where the confidence comes in. Because the confidence is that part that says, hey, maybe I fell short. What can I do to relearn? What can I do to do it again? And you try again. I mean, I have failed multiple times as a leader, as a business owner, as an educator. But every time I walked out of there learning something a little bit more and I said, okay, now let's reapply what I learned and do it again. I, I so agree. I mean, I have failed so many times and it really hurts every time. You only build the confidence to say that once you've actually achieved something. And there's the rub, isn't it? It almost takes you to get somewhere before you can just be much more honest about the fact that you learn so much more from failing than winning. And I agree with you. I mean, shame is the one we have to avoid at all costs. It should never be shameful to fail. It's normal, isn't it? Anyway, sorry, Sarah. How can you keep ideas fresh as a leader going into an adaptive concept evolving role? Great question, Sarah. So this is definitely where the emotional intelligence is going to come in because one of those core competencies is adaptability and the world is moving at such a fast pace and also growth mindset. Because the reality is that you're completely right. Like our, our technical skills today, they might not matter in 10 years. And so that's why having a growth mindset and being able to adapt and 10 years from now, you'll be able to say, let me learn another skill or let me relearn this skill according to society. And I think the third part of that is what we call collective intelligence. So that's being around other people that are maybe in your industry that are also evolving so that you constantly know what's happening and what the potential trend is going to be. So those are some really important concepts to keeping your ideas fresh. Fantastic. Oh, here's one. Where can I sign up for the course? And very importantly, do I get a certificate once I've completed it? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you for whoever asked that. So rise, yeah, you guys are so fast. <laughs> RiseLeadershipCourse.com and you do get a certificate. So actually Rise Up For You is certified by the Society of Human Resources Management. They are a global company, so anywhere around the world, and they certify through human resources credits, which is professional development credits, and Rise Up For You has the ability to certify through that organization. And so this course at the end, you do get PDCs that you can give back to your corporation or HR that are certified through SHRM. So absolutely. And, and it's a great thing that you can also put on your LinkedIn and on your resume. And I think it, I think you can do all of it, all of the rich content in six months. Is that right? Absolutely. It's in six months. And some of you might say, why so long? But Honestly, it always goes back to integrity and how we're building these skills. And research shows that it takes time to build these really important skills to be a leader, to be emotionally intelligent. And, you know, I know, Edwina, you probably feel the same way is we don't want to do the quick, you know, one day passive one month course. Like the reality is, is that we need to spend some time with you. So over those months, you you can see, yes, I'm actually seeing new habits and new positive behaviors that are impacting my leadership in a positive way. And so that's why we've decided to do it that way instead of saying like a one month quick access course. Yeah, because they're learned behaviors. We have to practice them, don't we? It's a bit like going to the gym. You can't suddenly get physically fit 
in one month, much to my chagrin, but you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Or if you do, it's not sustainable, right? Anyone that does it in one month, it's like in a year back to back to normal. So this is really the way that we built sustainable skills that can really help us be successful. And we're with you. My team and I are with you every single month. We're live. It's not automated. It's, it's not something that you watch on your own time. It's really with us so you can ask questions and we can engage in conversation. And sometimes you you do a person live, don't you? You actually agree to have a live person up there that you're actually talking about them in that session. Yeah, we always spend like the last 15 minutes doing live coaching. So we'll take anywhere between five to six people, four people, and we'll like, come on in, ask your question that's specific to you so it's customizable. And then of course, with your permission, we'll provide strategies and coach on spot. Because the reality is, is that we, we're all going through similar things. And so when we see it in other people, we can take that same information and apply it to ourselves as well. But it's really powerful when you see it in the moment. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, this is we're probably this is probably our last question because we're running out of time. But why is the Rise Leadership Program different to other courses out there? Because there are lots of leadership courses, aren't there? Yeah, that's a great question. I think there's a couple things. The first thing is it's based off of a lot of research in neuroscience. It's not hype. You know, and I think that's really important. I mean, do we have hype energy? Yes, because <laughs> we got to keep you engaged and we got to keep it fun. But everything is rooted in transformation and skills and science that really can move the needle. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is that it's not passive learning. So any type of transform transformation has to be active. It has to be engaged. And so our team, we're on there live, like I've mentioned. And we're, we're talking with you live in the moment so that you can make the shift. It's not something that you do while you're washing the dishes. No, you're with us. You're engaged. The third thing is that you actually get a certificate of completion from a very, very, one of the most credible HR management resources around the world. And so you have something at the end that you can say, I've accomplished this. And that's important for a lot of people. So, and then the fourth thing is diversity, diversity in content. Okay, the content that we're not talking about enough that we really need and also diversity in trainers. So you're not going to see me every single time. You know, we have incredible trainers that have PhDs in leadership, masters in organizational development and leadership and communication that are going to be together to really make sure that this is successful for you. And I've met some of your colleagues and they are all sensational, I have to say. Anyway, enough, yeah. enough. Listen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Honestly, I'm super excited about this big step forward for the female lead. I'd like to thank everybody out there for giving us the time for listening to this. You know, what for me is one of the most exciting step forwards the female lead has ever made. I'd like to thank you, Nada for your time, your expertise, and your generosity in supporting the female lead. And maybe we can just end with a reminder, please do have a look at our website, check out um, all the tools for you, take the survey, get everybody you know to take the survey. And if you can, and if you have the budget or your company has the budget, take a look at the course and whatever you do look after yourself build your skills take care thank you so much thank you nada thank you bye everybody thank you